this is the look I have going on today. It is a bridal look. It is very long and very in-depth, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, because you're gonna want your makeup to last a good portion of the day and possibly well into the night, you want to prime your skin, and I recommend priming your skin for long-wearing makeup anyway. It just, I think, is good for your skin all around, especially because it creates another barrier there between your skin and the makeup. So to prime my skin, I'm going to do my regular routine and use my Naked Skin Illuminating Beauty Balm and my MAC Prep and Prime Skin Smoother Base. Because you want your makeup to last all day long, and probably well into the night, I would definitely recommend choosing a long wear foundation, something that you already know works very well with your skin, so there will be like no muss, no fuss, you can just go and not have to worry about it. In my opinion, weddings and other special events, especially ones where you're going to be having your picture taken a lot, are not the times to be experimenting with new makeup. If you are wanting to get something special, something more on the high-end side, I definitely would say to do that if a month, if not a few months, before the wedding. Wear that foundation consistently, or the whole makeup, wear it consistently, make sure it holds up, and make sure it's really something you want to wear on your wedding. So the foundation that I know is very long-wearing and also works very well with my skin is this CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous. It does have SPF in it, but I have not had problems with flashback with this, so you should be good to go. So first of all, I'm just going to pump some of this out on the back of my, ooh, my hand here, and then I'm going to plunk it on like I normally would, but really I'm going to focus this into the center of my face. You don't really want to look cakey, you don't really want to look heavy, you just want to look natural and beautiful and flawless. You don't want to look like something you're not, so I would definitely recommend applying the foundation the way you normally apply it. So I've got that on, and I'm going to take my Real Techniques buffing brush and use that to work this foundation into my skin. I find that this gives me the most natural and flawless finish with this foundation. So I'm just going to kind of stipple and buff this in. And then just blending it out to the outer edges of the face. Then once I have that on, I'm going to go over top of it with a damp beauty blender and just make sure everything is super blended into the skin. And this will just also help to push the makeup into the skin so it sets a little bit nicer and doesn't necessarily look like it's just sitting on top of your face. Now for concealer, I would definitely recommend using the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. It doesn't crease, it doesn't budge, it sets kind of matte. It is definitely a longwear concealer. Um, I'm not going to be using that today, however, because I don't have it in the appropriate shade to match my skin tone. So I'm going to be using my Rimmel Match Perfection. So just any place where I would get redness throughout the day. So like around my nose. And then just on top of any places that need the extra coverage. So then to do a bit of concealing and a bit of highlighting, I am going to use my Rimmel Wake Me Up Concealer. Um, I was in a Walmart the other day that is by my old house and I found it. So we're going to highlight and conceal under the eyes. You don't want to go super crazy with this either because it is just, it's your, you're wanting to look naturally glamorous, not holy crap. <laughs> So just under the eyes in kind of a feathery triangular shape, a little bit down the nose, on the chin, a little bit through the forehead, under the brow bone, and then a little bit on the cupid's bow. Now I did go ahead and set my face off camera. I did it per usual with my Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder under my eyes and anywhere I highlighted. And then I did a light dusting of my Cody Airspun Loose Face Powder with a Duo Fiber Brush from Real Techniques. 
Um, the cover, this CoverGirl foundation is not one I really feel that I need to set with a powder because it is such a long wearing mattifying foundation that on my dry skin, I don't really need to set it. But if you do set it, it will just last that bit longer. Then moving on to bronzing and contouring. Now, if this is not something you do on an everyday basis, I would definitely kind of be wary of it, stay away from it, because you kind of want to just do how you look every day, just that little bit more glamorous, and do something wild that you don't normally do on your wedding day. At least that's my opinion anyway. So for blush today, I'm going to use the Benefit Rocketeur blush because this is just beautiful and it smells good and I think it's just a great flush of color on the cheeks. And then just for the slightest bit of a rosy glow on the apples of the cheeks, I'm going to use MAC Mineralize Blush in Dainty, which is a very soft pink color. And then for my highlight, I'm going to use my Mary Luminizer from The Balm. Like always, I just think this is beautiful and just make everybody look glowy and healthy. Now, eyebrows, again, are another thing that I think you should wear how you normally wear them. If you fill them in a lot or a little, wear them how you feel comfortable with wearing your eyebrows. Because, again, you kind of want to stick with what you would do on a regular basis. But I think for bridal brows should be a little bit more soft, still filled in and framing the face, but soft and natural looking. So I'm going to use my Jordana Fabu Brow in, what color is this? Taupe. Um, and I'm just going to lightly fill in my brows. Really just where they need that little bit of a fill in and I'm going to shape them a little bit as well. Then just to set my brows, I'm going to use my Benefit Gimme Brow in the shade Light Medium, just because this really does set my brows and hold them in place and last a really long time. Now, moving on to eyes, again, you want to prime your lids, and you want to choose the primer that you know works best on your eyeballs. Mine is the original Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. I love this stuff. It really just holds the color on my lids very well, and it's one that I highly recommend to everybody. For the first color on the lid, I'm going to be using my Mary Luminizer from The Balm, and this is probably the only super shimmery color that I'm going to be using for the entire look. And I'm going to just apply that with my finger. Then to start defining my eyes, I'm going to use this matte brown color out of the Kat Von D Monarch palette. If you have the original Naked palette, Buck is almost the same color, but I just prefer this one. I'm just using a really fluffy brush and really kind of just sloppily blending that into the crease just to make sure it's really soft and really kind of blown out so it's more of a hint of a shadow rather than a color. I'm also going to blend this down onto the outer, probably about the outer half of the lid, just add a little bit more definition there as well. Then I'm going to pick up my pencil brush, which was just, here it is. And with that same color, I'm going to run that probably about the outer two-thirds of the lash line. Then the next color I'm going to use, I'm going to use Tease out of the Naked 2 palette, which is kind of like a matte taupey mauve color and I'm just using a little bit of a smaller denser fluffy brush to apply that and I'm really just going to focus this on the outer half of the lid rather than bring it all the way in 
And I'm also going to blend that really just on like the outer third of the mobile lid itself. Then again, going in with my pencil brush, dipping into the same color, I'm going to keep this on about the outer third of the eye just to darken up the lash line a little bit. Then just to darken the outer corner of the eye the slightest bit more, I'm going in with this matte brown out of the Monarch palette again and with my pencil brush. I'm just going to apply that directly into the crease, but just right there. Then I'm going to go in with my denser fluffy brush again and blend that out. Then for my brow bone highlight, I'm going to use this buttery cream shade out of the Monarch palette as well and just kind of buff that over the top of everything and under the brow bone. Now for liner, I am just going to do like a half wing that only goes in to about here on the lid. But first I'm going to plot out the shape that I want with black eyeshadow because I can get it to match better that way on myself anyway. So I'm just going to take a matte black eyeshadow and an angle brush and plot out the shape that I want. Then I'm going to go in with a synthetic liner brush and a gel liner and just cover over that. Again, only going about halfway in. So in my waterline, I'm going to apply my Makeup Forever Aqua Eyes in the shade 23L. This is waterproof, so it's super long wearing. I'm just going to do that. Then I'm going to tight line with this Lord and Berry Mini Kajal Cold Liner in Black Silk. And I'm just going to, you know, do that. No lashes, only mascara, because generally at a wedding, you're going to be crying your eyes off anyway. And then for lips, I'm going to keep it super simple because it's easy for retouches and it's easy, it's just easy. Um, and I'm going to use just a lip gloss, and this is the Revlon Lip Gloss in 012 uh, Orchid. And it's just super pretty, I think it would look good on anybody. And it's super duper shiny. And that does it for my bridal makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye.